right friends welcome back to learning space this is a quick wrap up sixth module let us start with the science and technology before going to the panama disease of banana let me recollect the important aspect about fall army worm that is the insect which is affecting several crops but primarily maize is being affected it is also affecting several crops across the globe please do not forget the insect fall army worm that belongs to americas subsequently came to africa then came to india friends maize crop is badly affected because of fall army worm or f a w this is the most important aspect please do not forget incidentally in recent times india imported maize and at the same time most of you are well aware maize is predominantly used in the poultry industry right friends let us come back to the first slide this is about panama disease please do not forget this is the fungal disease fusarium wilt this affects banana crop friends the world is worried why because cavendish banana that is being affected right and please do not forget this is a g9 banana cultivar cavendish variety is being affected across the globe not only in india and one of the strains of this fusarium wilt that is tropical race 4 that is tr4 please don't forget that is threatening 80% of the global banana production friends one important aspect is this fungus that means this panama disease or fusarium wilt that resides in the soil that's why it becomes difficult to eliminate it right so friends it resides below the ground and it infects the plant through the roots right friends why are we discussing about it because first time indian scientist developed biofungicide to control this particular disease what is the name of this the name is icar fusi cont please don't forget it is made from a novel strain of a fungi that is trichoderma ec friends please do not forget fall army worm and this is the second one banana disease or you can say panama disease not banana disease it is for the banana crop panama disease and fusarium wilt similarly please don't forget i have already told you about why the farmers are illegally cultivating this hdbt cotton all of you are well aware to facilitate usage of the glyphosate glyphosate is the weed killer to facilitate that to reduce the cost of weedling by the manual labor that means to reduce the manual labor cost farmers are resorting to illegal cultivation of hdbt cotton which is not approved in our country we learnt in the previous lectures right friends these are important then conserving germplasm what is germplasm germplasm is a living tissue from which new plants can be grown please don't forget quite often in the newspapers germplasm that is the living tissue from which new plants can be grown and in uttarakhand this germplasm protection is into the news or you can say conservation is into the news from the perspective of brahma kaval and this sanjeevani herb or you can say these most important mythological species that is one is brahma kamal and the other one is sanjeevani herb they are into the news from the perspective of conservation of the germplasm right friends next most important one i would like to discuss now this is lnt ntpc announced to partnership that means demonstration plant will be established to convert co2 to methanol very very important aspect what is methanol i will write here c h 3 o h this is methanol c h 3 o h friends before going to methanol let me talk about ethanol ethanol that is in fact blended into petrol and our target is 10% by 2022 20% by 2030 ethanol blended petrol that there are two important aspects 
one is it improves the efficiency that is one aspect second aspect is particulate matter emissions they will be reduced of course in addition to other hydrocarbons friends most important aspect as far as ethanol blended petrol is concerned is it improves the efficiency of combustion that is the most important aspect second is most important one particulate matter emissions are reduced these two things please don't forget most important then friends when i talk about hcng hydrogen cng that is existing buses fleet can run with hcng up to the extent of 80 to 20% mix of hydrogen into cng and because of hcng please don't forget the maximum reduction will be in carbon monoxide of course some hydrocarbons that will also be reduced but the maximum impact is on carbon monoxide carbon monoxide emissions they will be reduced up to the extent of 70% with the usage of hcng so friends ethanol blended petrol please don't forget particulate matter emissions will be reduced hcng please don't forget carbon monoxide predominantly reduced and please do not forget we are going to talk about methanol that is the ch3oh people are talking about methanol based economy we will discuss from the mains perspective once again but from your prelims perspective let me tell you few important aspects methanol that is dangerous if human beings take 10 ml then they may lose eyesight because the nervous system will be affected because of methanol second when they drink 30 ml probably they may lose lives friends some time back we had a news report with regard to methanol mixing in assam in the country made liquor several people lost their lives so friends methanol is a highly dangerous right the chemical name is this is ch3oh please don't forget and another important aspect is let me tell you clearly methanol this is generally manufactured from natural gas please listen carefully methanol one question is expected it's generally manufactured from natural gas that is the first important aspect second is it can also be manufactured from biomass third is from carbon dioxide it can be manufactured right i gave you about from how many means it can be manufactured second important aspect please do not forget it is used primarily in the industrial sector that means its usage in the industrial sector as a feed stock for solvents resins that means it is used in the plywood it is used in the plastics for several industrial applications so methanol is there if you look at china methanol is blended with gasoline for running the vehicles friends by modifications to the engines the automobiles can be run exclusively with methanol also so friends please don't forget this methanol blended vehicles are running in china and in some other countries the applications are going on and methanol can be used for running the vehicles or automobiles exclusively also so these two three points please do not forget right and another important aspect please don't forget here it is used as a fuel to run the ships also right and another important aspect please don't forget this lnt ntpc announced the partnership this is to convert carbon dioxide to methanol and there are three steps involved first is capturing the carbon dioxide this is not difficult second is how to produce hydrogen because here hydrogen is required you see the chemical formula of this particular methanol ch3oh you capture carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is nothing but co2 after that through the hydrogenation process by using some metal catalyst this ch3oh is in fact produced please look at the chemical form you can easily understand carbon dioxide is co2 so friends capture carbon dioxide after that 
through the hydrogenation process that means you have to introduce hydrogen that is possible through a catalyst a metal catalyst so friends to produce this methanol first is capture carbon dioxide second is how to produce hydrogen friends there are number of ways of producing hydrogen but please recollect the project of green hydrogen project of european union friends green hydrogen project of european union one most important aspect please don't forget there they are trying to produce hydrogen by splitting water splitting water is by electrolysis of water that means here by splitting water by using renewable power that means by using some solar power or wind power water is split through the electrolysis process and this electrolysis process that is highly energy intensive across the globe experiments are going on how to reduce the energy intensity of splitting water right so friends this is green hydrogen so friends the project involves capturing carbon dioxide then second step is producing green hydrogen third step is hydrogenation process by using some metal catalyst right by using catalyst through hydrogenation this ch3oh or otherwise methanol is produced friends this is more than enough and finally most important one what is the advantage when methanol is blended with gasoline or some automobile fuel when methanol is blended what is the advantage please don't forget nox emissions sox emissions particulate matter these are reduced substantially that means methanol blended petrol or you can say methanol blended automobile fuel that reduces sulfur oxide emissions then nitrous oxide emissions or you can say nox emissions so friends sulfur oxide emissions nox emissions then particulate matter these are reduced friends please do not forget ethanol blended petrol impact is their particulate matter is reduced predominantly then hcng predominantly carbon monoxide is reduced methanol blended petrol here the reduction is sox emissions nox emissions particulate matter i hope you got clarity students must have clarity with regard to green hydrogen also that is by splitting water for splitting water the renewable energy is used right this is green hydrogen project of european union these things are important please don't forget right friends hydrogen fuel vehicles these are into the news hcng is one aspect because across the globe hydrogen production through green waste that is the most important project now how to produce hydrogen by green means for that across the globe people are exploring this splitting of water right but it is highly energy intensive now experiments are going on to reduce the energy intensity or you can say the energy requirement is proposed to be reduced that is the aspect of producing green hydrogen right friends we had sufficient about science and technology let us look at ecology and environment friends wildfires these are into the news what is the meaning of wildfire wildfire is uncontrolled fire in an area of this combustible vegetation australian wildfires we talked about colas colas endemic to australia they sleep for 20 hours they eat eucalyptus friends at the same time please don't forget pandas pandas live in the bamboo trees this is the difference please don't forget so friends when i talk about colas eucalyptus trees please don't forget they sleep for around 20 hours colas endemic to australia in the context of australian wildfires we discussed about colas right let us come back to the discussion wildfire is uncontrolled fire in the area of combustible vegetation what are the areas prone areas prone for these wildfires are australia southeast asia then southern africa usa canada friends recently we are talking about wildfires in united states of america's california region right and next important aspect is wildfires they are threatening this parana delta 
this is important wetland ecosystem of argentina please don't forget parana that is into the news because of wildfires and it is important wetland ecosystem of argentina friends the natural causes the largest natural cause for this wildfires is lightning please don't forget then another important aspect is usa when you talk about this wildfires in united states of america please do not forget to drive ins one is the santa ana drive ins and the second one is diablo drive ins these are important then usa california's death valley specifically this furnace creek let me repeat once again usa california's death valley that is furnace creek that is into the news because it recorded 54.4 degrees celsius if confirmed that is going to be probably the highest temperature recorded previously higher temperatures more than this were recorded but at that point of time there was no proper methodology to accuracy or proper records were not maintained that means the previous records available they were not considered reliable so therefore if confirmed this may become the highest do not forget california do not forget death valley do not forget furnace creek and united states of america's this forest fires santa ana drive ins and diablo drive ins please don't forget then parana delta that is argentina when we talk about the arctic i already told you about the zombie fires which are taking place below the soil because there it is having permafrost and that is melting and fires are also taking place in boreal forest in the arctic region and we learned about it and the peatlands they are releasing huge greenhouse gases so friends when people are talking about this boreal forest people are talking about the zombie fires please do not forget arctic region then here this death valley high temperature and please do not forget heat dome these are into the news heat dome why this high temperature of 54.4 degree celsius is recorded that is because of heat dome formation this is high pressure area because of high pressure circulation that traps hot ocean air hot ocean air coming from the ocean that is trapped and that is not having escape route because of high pressure it is trapped because of high pressure and that is known as heat dome please don't forget so friends heat dome that is important when we are talking about these high temperatures friends locus please do not forget certain atmospheric changes i would like to tell you in this context which are important from your prelims perspective positive indian ocean dipole because of positive indian ocean dipole what is happening the extended rainfall took place in certain areas of eastern africa right and there are irregular rains extended rains in the arabian region or you can say in the arabian peninsula involving countries like yemen saudi arabia there are irregular rainfall extended rainfall similarly because of positive indian ocean dipole eastern africa there is extended monsoon rainfall heavy rainfall in some countries because of that favorable conditions created for the proliferation of these locusts locusts are nothing but grasshoppers when they are single they behave in a solitary way just like grasshopper but when they are in group they get lot of power and that destroys the fields desert locusts they are highly dangerous friends here you see the favorable conditions are created like sandy soil moist sandy soil to lay the eggs and fresh vegetation for hoppers to grow into adults two things please do not forget because of excess rainfall especially towards eastern part of africa towards arabian peninsula what happened is favorable conditions are created that is moist sandy soil in the arabian peninsula to lay the eggs 
and subsequently visitation for hoppers to grow into adults because of these conditions we are seeing heavy proliferation of locusts in recent times please do not forget india pakistan these are affected because of locusts as well as arabian peninsula towards the eastern part of africa these are the important regions friends another important aspect comes to my mind with regard to el nino and la nina these things i would like to discuss in the upcoming classes because these are into the news in addition to western disturbances and jet stream these we are going to discuss in the upcoming classes look at the next one black carbon friends black carbon stays in the environment from around days to few weeks you can say few days to few weeks in the atmosphere and black carbon is dangerous if black carbon is deposited on the icy areas or you can say on the glaciers on the icy areas then what happens it absorbs huge sunlight and it leads to positive feedback loop or you can say this is happening in certain areas because of pollution right so friends please don't forget black carbon that is short lived climate pollutant all of you are familiar climate and clean air coalition is formed india joined as the 65th country basically to look at short lived climate pollutants short lived climate pollutants means they stay in the environment for lesser period but have high global warming potential right and black carbon how is it released black carbon predominantly two three important aspects please don't forget brick kilns because of brick kilns black carbon is released stubble burning is second one burning of the biomass is the third one friends indian brick kilns are traditional so therefore predominantly black carbon is released of course stubble burning right black carbon it stays in the environment from few days to few weeks but its global warming potential is around 460 to 1500 times what is global warming potential 100 years origin is taken over a 100 year period it is compared with that of carbon dioxide gwp of carbon dioxide is considered as 1 and if you take methane around 28 to 30 and if you take black carbon 460 to 1500 or so so friends they stay in the environment for lesser period but they have huge potential to catch heat that's why they are called short lived climate pollutants what are the four one is tropospheric ozone tropospheric ozone is produced on a hot sunny day right and when the sunlight is there under certain conditions this tropospheric ozone is produced right tropospheric ozone is there in the atmosphere from few hours to few days this is the difference between tropospheric ozone and this black carbon by the way let us come back to the discussion tropospheric ozone black carbon then hydrofluorocarbons right and the fourth one that means first is black carbon methane tropospheric ozone hfcs these are considered as short lived climate pollutants i hope you got clarity please do not forget ccac right then endangered species of western ghats friends in the next class i will talk about northeastern part of the country as far as endangered species are concerned in today's class let us look at western ghats first is lion tailed macaque please do not forget it is in isolated tropical forests of western ghats so friends when i talk about lion tailed macaque this is in isolated tropical forests of western ghats and one of the most endangered primates in the world these three species are endangered please do not forget second is purple frog that is in the rain forests of western ghats mostly it stays underground third one is most of you are well aware nilgiri tahar that is the state animal of tamil nadu and southern western ghats altitude around 1100 to 2600 meters poaching and extension of the areas for eucalyptus plantation these are the major threats for nilgiri tahar 
these three are endangered please do not forget when somebody is talking about western cards lion tailed macaque purple frog nilgiri tah and in the tomorrow's class or in the next class i would like to discuss about northeastern part of the country friends let us look at some national international events friends logistics exchange memorandum of agreement lemo with united states of america as we have seen in the previous classes comcasa because of comcasa now encrypted communication equipment that is possible between india and united states of america and this mutual logistics support agreement mlsa that was signed with australia similar agreement exists with france and recently agreement on reciprocal provision of supplies and services was signed with japan friends from your preliminary perspective two things please don't forget one with australia and the second one is with japan with australia mutual logistics support agreement or mlsa mutual logistics support agreement is with australia agreement on reciprocal provision of supplies and services is with japan please don't forget and these facilitate using each others bases right for the fueling and for repairs each others bases can be used friends in recent times line of actual control is in the news line of actual control is neither delineated nor demarcated that is the real problem please listen carefully line of actual control between india and china that is neither delineated nor demarcated that is the precise reason china is causing problems quite often friends in this context several places are in the news one is chushul valley please don't forget then that song galwan pangongso pangongso lake that is situated partly in india partly in china please don't forget when i am talking about india it is in ladakh union territory right and when i am talking about china it is in tibet right then 1993 agreement that exists on the maintenance of peace and tranquility with regard to ensuring peace and tranquility at the line of actual control please do not forget subsequently 1996 confidence building measures these two pertains to line of actual control friends please do not forget meis mercantile exports from india scheme this is considered not logical or you can say wto said it is incompatible with the norms because meis is considered as export subsidy please listen carefully meis mercantile exports from india scheme it is considered as giving export subsidy once a country's per capita income crosses certain limit export subsidies are not allowed as india's per capita income crossed certain limit for three consecutive years export subsidies are not allowed for india accordingly wto said please wipe out mercantile exports from india scheme so now india decided to wipe out mercantile exports from india scheme in recent times these mercantile exports from india scheme incentives granted to the exporters increased substantially but overall exports are almost at the same level this is the irony now government decided to scrap this meis already in the textiles sector this is scrapped friends in its place now the government is bringing this remission of duties or taxes on export products that means whatever input tax is paid on the export goods they will be reimbursed that's why remission of duties or taxes the reimbursement of those input taxes that is this rod tep scheme it will be wto compatible please listen carefully meis that is not wto compatible but this rod tep that is wto compatible and that is going to be implemented across the country right then bamboo that is taken out from the classification of tree in 2017 that means in the non forest areas please listen carefully in the non forest areas there is no restriction on the felling of the bamboo 
selling it for commercial purposes please don't forget then this northeast tulda variety indian agarbatti that means indian agarbatti making till now they are importing from other countries now they decided to use tulda variety of bamboo from northeastern part of the country another important aspect is first ever bamboo industrial park is coming up in assam friends in this context first ever sports university is coming up in manipur please don't forget friends then who this quite often in mn they are into the news they belongs to shia jaydi sect please don't forget who this shia jaydi sect and please do not forget mn because civil war is going on then alawites they belong to shia community please do not forget syria hazaras central afghanistan then this azidis which were persecuted by islamic state they belongs to or you can say iraq then friends weakers right please do not forget weakers they are the turkic origin muslims then this ohan right ohan is into the news because of covid 19 please don't forget then basically this pertains to hong kong friends there are two special administrative regions in china one is hong kong second one is macau macau was handed over by portugal in 1999 and hong kong was handed over because of the agreement in 1997 and 50 years right up to 2047 this basic law this is supposed to be applicable for hong kong hong kong is created with the principle of one country two systems please don't forget in this context please don't forget united kingdom backstop that is to ensure unrestricted border between northern ireland which is a territory of uk and republic of ireland in the ireland island right then national security law this created problems because through national security law certain restrictions are imposed on the citizens in hong kong that is the precise reason then friends subogan ville they want independence that is the territory of papua new guinea catalonia spain another region nagorno karabakh region this is armenia azerbaijan please don't forget then this gert we discussed previously this is the dam coming up on blue nile this is in ethiopia then it created controversy sudan and egypt are not happy friends uae is the first gulf arab state and third arab nation to recognize israel first two countries which recognized israel in that area one is egypt that means first arab nation egypt second is the jordan third one is uae and it is the first gulf arab state if you look at arab states it is the third one if you look at gulf arab state it is the first one please don't forget friends let us look at some random thoughts these statements are most important as they give crystal clear clarity to you by the by for a few seconds today's editorial discussion we are going to discuss on a comprehensive view on vaccine or drug trials what exactly take place in the drug trials second is an overview of foreign contribution regulation act friends third one is logistics pact with japan towards strengthening the quad these three we are going to discuss in today's editorial all of you are well aware monday wednesday friday editorials tuesday thursday connect the dots let us come back to the discussion hypoxic zones with inadequate levels of oxygen are created in the oceans or seas and they are only because of anthropogenic reasons wrong they can be because of natural reasons also because of ocean currents then nitrogen use efficiency is only 30% around 30% you can say and this is one of the reasons for the formation of dead zones friends recently we discussed about how the dead zone impacted one particular island of gulf of mannar off the tamil nadu coast friends 
for the formation of dead zones two things please don't forget one is nitrogen second one is phosphorus then during the past decade yield of bt cotton increased substantially wrong friends then one important aspect please don't forget this bt cotton yield of course there was also controversy but in general you can conclude up to some extent after the introduction of bt cotton in 2002 yields increased during the initial years during the initial 5 to 6 years yields increased and after that there is no significant increase in the yield in some years it got reduced this is the reality please don't forget hdbt cotton that is illegally cultivated then continuous emission monitoring system friends standard aging agency is csir national physical laboratory please don't forget standardizing agency or you can say to look at the standards the agency is csir national physical laboratory that is designated as the agency and this continuous emission monitoring system where the emissions every 15 minutes on real time basis they reach central pollution control board office and state pollution control boards that is not applicable for all the industries it is applicable for the highly polluted notified industries then agriculture accounts for over 70% of all nitrous oxide emissions in india absolutely correct friends when one looks at nitrous oxide in our country agriculture is the largest emitter please don't forget because of nitrogen use efficiency is low it is around 30% as we have seen previously as the nitrogen use efficiency is low nitrate pollution is taking place dead zones are forming in the seas nitrous oxide is being emitted there are three problems we are facing because of the nitrogen use efficiency is at around 30% or so indian agriculture emits more nitrous oxide than methane as per the available news reports this is correct then life insurance corporation of india why i have taken lic of india because government decided to sell part of the stake in life insurance corporation of india it is going to become public shortly in this context a question may be asked life insurance corporation of india is the statutory body please don't forget it is not a company under the companies act it is a statutory body friends as per the standard protocol for the immunization of children the biggest shortfall or the largest shortfall is noticed in the vaccination of measles friends measles vaccination is not up to the mark around 95% vaccination is required to achieve herd immunity but unfortunately not only in our country in several countries measles vaccination is not able to reach the level of herd immunity that is the biggest problem we are facing because of lack of herd immunity measles increased across the globe india is not an exception right and another important aspect please do not forget here about the herd immunity herd immunity depends on disease to disease it may be due to naturally or due to complete vaccination or vaccination up to certain percentage level when the strain is circulating among more number of people it may lead to natural herd immunity which people are talking about the covid-19 friends another important word comes to my mind serological survey what is the meaning of serological survey that is the survey done to look at antibodies in the people right then on an annual basis the latest occurrence of economic contraction that took place in 1979 80 why because at that point of time Iranian revolution oil prices increased drought conditions because of those two reasons around 5% contraction in the economy took place that was in 1979 80 prior to that economic contractions on annual basis occurred around four times or so but after that on an annual basis economic contraction never occurred 
So it appears to be 2020-21 that is heading for more economic contraction than 5%. So friends, in 2021, on an annual basis, economy is certainly going to be contracted and this is happening after 40 years. On quarterly basis, that is different. Quarterly basis happened in between also, but on an annual basis, this is going to be the first time after 1979-80. Please do not forget, economic contractions occurred in independent India around five times or so. And the latest one, the largest one is in 1979-80 with around 5% contraction. Please don't forget. This is the most important aspect. And we recently received the quarterly figures of 23.9% contraction. Please do not forget that 23.9% economic contraction on quarterly basis. Please don't get confused. First, I talked about annual basis. Annual basis means 1979-80 was the latest one. And 2020-21 is going to be having economic contraction of more than 5%. That is on an annual basis. When I look at quarterly basis, Quarterly basis data is released from 1996 or so. After the quarterly basis data is available from 1996 or so, 23.9% contraction of the first quarter of 2020-21 is the largest. Please don't forget. Right? Then as per the GDP figures for quarter 1 of 2020-21, as per the quarter 1 figures, friends, please don't forget, GDP figures are released in eight segments out of the eight segments worst affected are construction trade hotels etc and this manufacturing construction trade hotels etc and manufacturing even construction has gone up to 50 percent contraction right friends then india is the net sugar importer in recent times absolutely wrong India is the net sugar exporter in recent times. We are seeing glut in the sugar. Precisely that is the reason why India allowed ethanol production directly from sugar cane juice. Then more than one-fourth of FDI into the country came from Singapore in 2019-20. Absolutely correct. As far as FDI is concerned, largest comes from Singapore. Second, Mauritius. Third, Netherlands. And of course, if you see from 2000 or so, the total FDI, if you take, maximum came from Mauritius. But because of the modification of the double taxation avoidance agreements, which Mauritius lost its edge, or you can say because of the changes in the double taxation avoidance agreement, now maximum FDI is coming from Singapore. Second is Mauritius. That is Netherlands. Then, during the past six months, there is a substantial increase in the foreign exchange reserves. Absolutely correct. In general, accompanied by rupee depreciation. Absolutely wrong. During the past five, six months or so, rupee appreciated in general from around 77 rupees to around 73 rupees. So, friends, from your preliminary perspective, during the past five, six months, foreign exchange reserves increased substantially and at the same time it is accompanied by rupee appreciation from around 77 to around 73 then Mahatma Gandhi Narega wages absolutely correct are in general lesser than the minimum agricultural wages of course there are few exceptions like Tamil Nadu Uttar Pradesh other than that in most of the states MG and REG wages are lesser than the agriculture minimum wages. This is the irony, please don't forget. And next important aspect is, these are revised by the center every year. That is based on one particular index we learnt in the previous classes. Then, as per the latest available PLFS, the unemployment rate in the country has seen substantial increase. Friends, available PLFS data pertains to 2017-18, and the unemployment rate is 6%. That 
the previous data available for around 2011-12 or so at that point of time this PLFS was not there but due to some other statistical methodology at that point of time the unemployment rate was around 2.2 percent or so. So in general if a such question is given you can conclude during the past decade unemployment rate increased in general across the country. Serum Institute of India, this is based in Pune, that is the world's biggest vaccine manufacturer in volume terms, absolutely correct. Then Japan's pacifist constitution, absolutely correct, allows only the self-defense forces. Of course, here some changes were made in recent times, but that particular constitutional amendment that could not be done. So when people are talking about Japan, Please don't forget pacifist constitution. Most of you are familiar with quadrilateral Malabar exercises. Malabar exercises involves three countries, India, USA and Japan. Whereas quadrilateral includes Australia also in addition to these three countries. Then in India, the contribution of renewable power out of the total power generated accounts for around 9 to 10%, not 22%. 22% is installed capacity. Around 9 to 10% is the power generated. Friends, please do not forget, ground mounted solar is a somewhat reasonable progress is there, but rooftop mounted solar, abysmal failure. Third important aspect is, in recent times, government is focusing on solar, than wind projects. Then alternate flooding and drying that results in microbial activity which leads to increased nitrous oxide emissions. Absolutely correct. Because of continuous flooding of the rice fields, methane is released. Because of alternate wetting and drying, it increases huge nitrous oxide emissions. Then the probable economic recovery in 21-22 is most likely due to base effect. Friends, if the economy contracts 10% this year, that means in 2019-20, if the economy is 100 rupees, in 2021, if economy contracts by 10%, it becomes 90 rupees. After that, if it increases by 11%, it reaches 100. The figure of 2019-20, that means it looks good, 11%, but it is due to base effect, low base of 90. So friends, base effect is one important word, just like import cover, just like incremental capital output ratio, just like cross fixed capital formation, all these things are very important. Friends, this concludes today's sixth lecture. Please do join for seventh lecture tomorrow. Have a nice day. Thank you.